In this lecture, I'm going to go over another example of axiomatic system problems. And this one came from the spring 2019 final exam for this course. So here are our three axioms that we're using for our axiomatic system. And we want to do several things with these. And the first is justify that the axiomatic system is consistent. So for that, we want a model that satisfies all these axioms. Let's make some room for a picture. The first axiom says that we should have at least one point and at least one line with a point not on the line. So let's go ahead and start with that. So we have our line and we need a point not on the line. The second axiom says given any two distinct lines, well, we don't have to worry about that. There aren't two distinct lines. And then the third axiom says given any point, there exist at least two lines passing through the point. Okay, so we have to add two lines to this picture passing through the point. Okay, are all the axioms okay? Let's see. Well, we still have the same point and line we started with that made axiom one true. Given any two distinct lines, there exists exactly one point on both lines. Okay, maybe not with that one. Huh? We need these two lines to have something in common and these two lines to have something in common. So we'll go for the obvious points here. We have those two points we'll add. Now these two lines have something in common. These two lines have something in common. And these two lines have something in common. Let's see, is that enough? Uh, axiom one is still true. Axiom two is true now. Given any point, there exist at least two lines passing through the point, and that's certainly true. So this is a model that satisfies all three axioms. And so this justifies that the axiomatic system is consistent. I'm going to jump to part C, which said to justify the system is not complete. So if it's not complete, hopefully we can find two different models, two different examples to show it's not complete. So let's see, we want some other example besides this one, or maybe we can add something to this. And it might take a little while to think of what to do, but certainly one of the things to try here, it works, and that is if I just add another line going through this point here uh, and this point. Um, and so let's see, is this still true? Well, we still have what we started with, that one point and a line not on the point. That hasn't changed. Given any two distinct lines, there exists exactly one point on both lines. So we can go through every pair if we wanted to here. The axiom two is true. Uh, given any point, uh, there exist at least two lines passing through the point. And we can see that's true. Okay. So that finishes part C, and let's go to what B was. Justify the axiomatic system is independent. And I already have axiom one here. We want to find an example for axiom one showing it's independent from the other axioms. So that means we want a model that satisfies axiom two and axiom three, but not axiom one. So. If we think about what we did a little while ago, let's see, we started out with this line and we added a point to make axiom one true. What if we didn't add that point? Well, we can see both of these are true because we don't have two distinct lines and we don't have a point. Okay, now we could add some more here. I could go ahead and draw another line in here. I would, I would need to count the point where they intersect by axiom uh, two, but this would be another model that would work here. So it doesn't satisfy axiom one, but it does satisfy axiom two and axiom three as well. And another model that we shouldn't ignore is we could just have the empty set. So the empty set wouldn't satisfy axiom one, but axiom two and three would factually be true. So that finishes showing that axiom one is independent of axiom two and axiom three. Let's look at axiom two and try to show that it cannot follow from axiom one and axiom three by finding a model 
that satisfies axiom one and axiom three, but not axiom two. So for that, we can remember how we began this construction. We went ahead and had this picture at some point, and we said that axiom two wasn't true, but the other axioms were. So I'm gonna check that again. We have the line and the point that made axiom one true, and then we went, we skipped axiom two because it was already true, and we came down, we added these two to make axiom three true, and so axiom three holds, but axiom two does not. That's why we added two more points to our model for the system. So this was something we saw earlier. It satisfies axiom one and axiom three, but not axiom two. Now we need a model for showing axiom three is independent. So we want the first two axioms to be true and not the third axiom. Well, this happened earlier as well. And we had this. We started out with this to make axiom one true. And we said axiom two was true because there weren't two distinct lines, but axiom three was not. So that's why we added two more lines going through the point. But this is what we had at some point early on. And we saw that axiom one and axiom two are true, but not axiom three. So this would be a model showing that axiom three does not follow from axiom one and two. And so each of the axioms now we have shown is independent of the other two axioms. And this shows the axiomatic system is independent. What is the dual of axiom three? Now, of the things we've talked about and, and worked on, uh, this one seems to me the possible one I could ask on a multiple choice test that could trip you up a little bit because you don't get to use your own words for this, I get to use my words. And you might have to match what I'm saying. So here we're trying to do, given any point, there exist at least two lines passing through the point. So the way I would word that dual is the following. Every line has at least two points on it. So that might be different than you would word it. But what we're saying is given any line, so every line, there has to exist at least two points that are on the line. So this was a short way of saying the dual of this, and you should realize that's the same as the dual, and that's how it might be worded on a multiple choice test, so you would have to match that rather than some other ones that I might say that involve similar wording to this. So that finishes uh, part D here. Now let's see what the next the goal is here. Oh, we want to prove that in this axiomatic system, there exist at least three distinct points. So this is a proof. So we want to prove somehow that there exist at least three distinct points. Now we saw that in our models, and we can use sort of how we began our construction of our model by using axiom one. That's the first thing we sort of have to use. These don't show that anything exists. And you can't really use these to start with. So we need to use axiom one to start with. And axiom one is going to give us a line and a point. So let's start with, by axiom one, there is a line L and a point P with P not on L. Okay, so that's coming directly from axiom one. Now what can we do? Well, we can't use axiom two yet. We don't have two distinct lines. And the next thing we did before was axiom three Notice we can't use axiom one again. We have the line and the point not on it. Uh, so axiom three is really forced on us if we're gonna to try to go anywhere with this. And axiom three says that given any point, there exists at least two lines passing through the point. Okay, well, P is not on L, so L doesn't pass through the point. So we're gonna to have to have two other lines that pass through the point P by axiom three. So by axiom three, there are two distinct lines, L1 and L2, passing through P. So I'm going to go ahead from here. I actually don't need axiom one anymore because I already have the, the point in line that came from axiom one. Axiom three, it might not be clear that I don't need that anymore, but I don't. So I'm going to save some room here, and I'm going to put axiom two at the top and continue this proof. I put what we're trying to prove down here. And I will remove that at some point once we get a little bit further. But you can read that for now. We're at this point where we have this line L and with, with P not on L 
and now we have two lines passing through P. Let me go ahead and deduce what we can that L is not equal to L1 or L2 because P is on L1 and L2, but not L. So since P is on L1 and L2, but not on L, we have L doesn't equal L1 and L doesn't equal L2. Okay, so now we wanna somehow use this axiom two. We have lots of lines now, we have three lines. So any two of them should intersect someplace at some point. And L1 and L2, we already know pass through P, so they intersect at P. But what about L and L1 and L and L2? So L and L1 are distinct lines. So axiom two tells us they should have a point in common. It can't be P because P is not on L. So let me start with that. Since P is not on L, we deduce from axiom two, there is a point Q not equal to P on L and L1. So again, axiom two is telling me that L and L1 intersect someplace. It can't be at P because P is not on L. So it has to be at some other point Q. And I can do the same thing with L and L2. Since P is not on L, we deduce from axiom two, there is a point R not equal to P on L and L2. Again, L and L2 are distinct lines. And so by axiom two, they have to intersect someplace, but it can't be at P because P is not on L. So we get this point R where they intersect. So now I have three points. I have P, Q, and R. We can see P is not Q and P is not R. I'm trying to show there's three points. I need to justify that R is not Q. So once I justify that R is not Q, then we'll be done with this problem. We'll have shown that there's at least three distinct points. So I'm gonna get rid of E now because we know what the goal is now. We're just trying to show that R does not equal Q. Okay, so what do we do next? Since L1 and L2 are not equal, axiom two implies we cannot have both L1 and L2 passing through both P and Q. So again, we had the L1 and L2 were distinct lines up here. So axiom two is telling me that I've had two distinct lines that exist exactly one point on both lines. So we can't have both P and Q on both these lines. Notice P does not equal Q. So these are two distinct points that can't be on two lines. Two lines can only have one point in common. So L1 and L2 cannot both pass through P and Q. And let's think for a moment, we have L1. L1 did in fact pass through P, both L1 and L2 did. And L1 went through P. And so L1 has both P and Q on it. So it's L2 that can't have both P and Q on it. And it has P on it, so it can't have Q on it. Let me write that down. Since L1 passes through both P and Q, and L2 passes through both P and R, we deduce that R cannot be Q. So notice if R were Q, you would have P and Q on L2, and you would have P and Q on, on L1. And so you, you can't have P and Q on both of those lines we just said, so we can't have R equal to Q. So that was, a, that was a, a, a good deduction there, and now we have then that P is not Q, P is not R, and R is not Q. So no two of these points are the same. And so we're able to deduce that we have three distinct points.